Hi, this is Kane Hodder, Victor Crowley, Jason from Friday the 13th. You're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. Welcome to the Station of Decapitation Without Your Head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by Melanie Kinneman of Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. good I noticed good. on your IMDb, actually, you're from Massachusetts as well as I. I am. I am. I'm from very close to Springfield, Mass. Mm-hmm. And I grew up there. I went to high school in East Hampton, Mass. So I'm a native. Very cool. Spent you... time on the Cape Cod in the summer. That's where I am. I'm on the Cape right oh. now. Mm-hmm. Oh, my, one of my favorite places. Uh, it's extremely hot the at the moment. Best, but... best lobster. Well, it's very hot in L.A. Yes. And the le- best lobster in the world <laughs> is on I the Cape. Definitely. You know that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> A little plug for um, Captain Scott's uh, down the street by me. I walk down there for lunch sometimes, and right now it's nineteen ninety nine stuffed lobster. Uh, all oh, day long, so. I'm dying! How great! <laughs> but I'm sure people didn't uh, tune in to listen about lobster. Well, maybe some did. No. I don't know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I saw an interview with you where. You said you knew that you were auditioning for Friday the 13th movie, and I know a lot of people yeah. say it was for, you know, it was for a movie called Repetition. So, Well, yes, it was for a movie called Repetition, but they did tell me it was a Friday the 13th. I just thought it was going to be called Friday the 13th Repetition, right. which would have seemed appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I knew. I just had never seen a Friday the 13th. Right. So I didn't really know what that meant other than it was a horror film. But I didn't know anything about Friday the 13th. Mm-hmm. So did they tell you to keep that a secret? Or did they yes. just not? Oh, okay. Did you have to sign yeah. anything or anything? Yes. Kind of like some of the projects I'm working on right now. <laughs> okay. I wish I could plug them, but uh-huh. I'll be able to plug them in a month. <laughs> okay, very good. You know, you sign things a lot of times when you do something, um, saying that you won't talk about them, you know, until, it, until they release it first. They, they like the networks. And the studios and the independents like to be the first to plug their new project. Mm-hmm. So they don't like it when the talent or, or people in the film or crew or, you know, they just don't like it if you open your big fat mouth. So, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. if you know, if the other cast members knew it was a Friday 13th or was you specific? Some of them didn't because as I've seen that, well, even on the set, I knew they didn't know. Mm-hmm. So I didn't say anything. I think John Shepard and I. And maybe Marco St. John, who was the sheriff, uh, was he the sheriff? Yes. I think we were the ones that knew. Um, so we didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after the fact, I've done a couple of conventions and I've seen some of the cast there after all these years. And they told me they didn't know. Yeah. Like you said, even on the set. So when did, when did it was, when was it like, uh, apparent that this was a Friday 13th movie? I think pretty much into the shoot, probably within, I would say within a week. I can't imagine anybody on that set would not know what it was. Right. Once. Um, you know, you'd have to be, well, I don't want to say, but <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, the mask was there, right. and all those, you know, bloody death scenes. Some of us were there for the killing, and obviously the people that got killed were there for the killing. So you knew pretty pretty soon into it, I think. Mm -hmm. What was the audition like? It was pretty grueling. I mean, the first, the first audition is just kind of a meet and greet talk, talk about the project, meet the director, meet the, uh, the people from Paramount. And then they brought me back and, uh, had me read a little bit. And then, uh, I think it was Frank Mancuso, Junior, who said, I'd like you to improv, improv a scene that you're being murdered. So I went outside of the room and then I came back in. I kicked the door open. I proceeded to do the scene. And when I finished, I looked up and all their eyes were wide, you know, and their jaws were open. So I thought, well, I, I think I might have done okay. <laughs> And, uh, that got the part right after that. So they, they didn't wait too long. They called me probably a few hours later. Technically they're supposed to wait to go through your agent and call you the next day. But they, they told me pretty much, uh, within a few hours. Yeah. 
So when you improvise the death scene, do you, uh, in your mind, think of how you're being killed? Yes. Well, you, I focused on the the intense fear a person must have when you realize what's 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 happening to you. You're going to die. You, you, because it's a shock. Obviously, anybody that's been murdered, they didn't know what was coming. They wouldn't be there. So it's all a shock and adrenaline and absolute fear. Uh, fight or flight, mm. that's all in there. So that's all I really had going. I didn't have a story going. I, I just had that uh, animal instinct to, to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Do you call upon the, that same kind of, uh, those same emotions when you're filming the movie? Yes. Is that, yes. um, but you have more time to develop because now you have a script. I had no script when I did the audition. Sure. You have a script, you have a story, you have a character that you've now developed. Uh, by the time you arrive on the set, you have a, a person that you've created in your mind mm -hmm. and you, you, you approach the scene, you come into the scene as that person and as, as you're shooting, as you're developing, as you're working with the other actors, the character uh, is more fleshed out. So um, you bring all of that with you, plus the no all the knowledge that you didn't have in the audition. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you know it's a movie and you're, you're an actor, but uh, does that ever, um, is that ever hard to deal with to get into that mindset? No, not really. No, no, no. That's the fun of it. That's yeah. the fun of it. That's, that's the art of it. You know, um, that's where the fun is mm. being able to create that, do it, believe it, make it believable. Um, yes, you know, it's not real. You're not being chased and killed, right. but at that moment in that scene, yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Um, it's who, real. Who picked out your wardrobe? Cause I believe yeah, if you don't on. do that, if you don't do that, mm -hmm. It's not real for the person watching. So, mm -hmm. and uh, who picked out your wardrobe? Yeah, not me. <laughs> um, I've wiped her name from my memory forever. <laughs> uh, she was a nice girl, but uh -huh. you know, I can't remember. She just fought me tooth and nail on what to wear. I remember the day we went out. They took me out for wardrobe shopping, mm -hmm. two or three different stores. And, uh, everything she brought, I just hated, but I thought, okay, I guess they know more than I do about what the character should look like. Mm -hmm. Well, they really didn't, but you know, I was, I was, I was new. It was a lead in the, my first lead in the film. And I mm -hmm. thought they know everything and I don't. So I think I could have picked better wardrobe, but, um, it worked out. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, but no, I didn't pick it. I wouldn't have had that stupid pink sweater. I didn't pick any of it. <laughs> Uh -huh. Well, I was asked about the sweater because I don't know how familiar you you were at the time or now with uh, the previous Friday the Thirteenth movies. But do you think the character's name uh, Pam and and the sweater was at all like um, a, a callback to uh, Pamela Voorhees, Jason's mom? Because she she wore a sweater. Oh. She wore sweaters. Yeah. Oh, and she's the killer well, yeah, in the first movie. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think they're that clever. I, I think <laughs> it was just a war, war, wardrobe choice for me. They gave it to me. Quite frankly, the, the character, um, Pam Roberts, would have never cared about that sweater when you're running to save your life. Mm -hmm. When that thing was falling off, you would just lose it, right? It would just be, you, it would be gone. Mm hmm you wouldn't be putting it back on as they pretended it happened. And right. uh, it just, it just wouldn't be a garment. I mean, when you're running and you're screaming, you're taking clothes off, you know what I mean? You're just running. Mm -hmm. You're making yourself as, as light and fast as possible. Mm -hmm. If I could have taken my shoes off, I would have, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, running through the woods and all the rain and, and stuff is, was it physically uh, grueling? Very, very, because it was done middle of the night it was freezing i about 30 degrees where we shot it and add the rain the rain machines and that water i don't know why i thought it would be warm 
it was freezing cold, much colder than real rain is Mm -hmm. and thick comes out thick. So that added weight onto your body as you're running. And I was running in terrain that was very unstable. Mm -hmm. So, and it was constant takes. So it was very physically grueling. I got the flu pretty early into it. Um, and of course there's no sick days. So I worked with the flu during those, those scenes. I remember hmm. it's one of my most vivid memories of working sick on that, uh, that, but those particular scenes, by yeah. the time I shot the chainsaw scene, I wasn't sick anymore. So that was uh-huh. fun. Uh-huh. Was it fun to use a chainsaw on set? Well, it was on, it was, I've never done it before. I never, yeah you know, I've been called to do it before and I've never had any reason in my life to have a chainsaw. So (laughs) it was very interesting. And, uh, you know, it was, um, demanding because it was very heavy and I had to kind of wheel it around and I had to throw it at Tom Morga. So I had the fun of having to, you know, do my own stunt, if you, if you will, Mm -hmm. for that thing. And, uh, there was a lot of choreography and, and rehearsal. So I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. I worked with some great stunt people and, and stunt coordinator. Yeah. Um, yeah. Overall. Dick, Dick the... Warlock. Dick Warlock was oh, the yeah. uh, stunt coordinator and uh, trained me and rehearsed with me and Tom Morgan. Of course, Tom is a great stunt guy, so he knew what he was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. But I have to say, after a few rehearsals, I was pretty good with that chainsaw. Uh huh. Have you ever used it since? No. <laughs> 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 to take it up, but uh, uh, now I know you're. You've had you've. I've seen interviews with you, so I know you've had some problems with uh, with Dan Steinman, the director at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. What was he like to 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 work with? Most people had a great experience. Mine wasn't terrible. I don't mm-hmm. want it to seem that it was. There were moments when it was uncomfortable. But for the most part, it wasn't, uh, it, it was okay. It wasn't a nurturing, meaning I, I expected him to work with me more and be, uh, you know, where I could ask him questions or he could like, we could bounce ideas off each other because I, I came from theater mm-hmm. in New York and that was my background. And that's the kind of thing you do. You bounce ideas off each other. You, you try different things and Danny wasn't into that. So, uh, I, I caught onto that pretty quick. So I changed my mindset on it and was kind of much on my own, Mm -hmm. which was okay because I learned a lot. And I think the finished product is pretty good. So it worked out. Yeah. Would you say at the time, um, uh, working with him and, and, uh, the rain and all these different things, was it, um, was it a positive experience making the movie? Oh yeah. It was very, very positive. Like I said, I learned a lot because it was more than what I expected. I was in situations I had never been in before. I had never really done a physical part. Um, and this was, as you can see, it's mostly physical Mm -hmm. and, um, well, I was physical and emotional uh, together, which is really demanding. So I learned an awful lot. It was a great experience, even during the hard times when I thought, oh, I don't think I can, I don't think I can do another minute, you know, tonight. I just don't think. And you you push yourself and they push you and you're able to do things you think you cannot do. So that's always a plus in life when you find that you can do things and you're stronger than before you set, you know, stepped into it. So uh, that was great great um i think it's on the it's either dvd or blu-ray he mentions that it was originally going to be in 3d uh, do you remember that at all and if they no were using you know you don't remember that no i had no idea no 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 that's that's new to me mm-hmm. i didn't know that they were I, I just knew uh that we were signed on to do um two five and six so when we wrapped part five they said, we'll see you in a few months because we're going to gear up in a few months after this is released to start on six. Mm-hmm. And, well, and then I got a notice by phone that it wasn't going to happen, that John Shepard changed his mind. 
and John Shepard and I were joined at the hip at the last shot of the film mm -hmm. and we were supposed to start that's how six was going to start yeah. you know the way, right right where five went off uh, ended so john and i had to be in the film together and when john said i don't want to do this anymore it ended the prospect of john shavar and i working together mm -hmm. um, and continuing at, part six at that time what were your feelings on that I was very upset. Mm -hmm. I was surprised, uh, but very upset because I thought we could have really done more in part six mm -hmm. and better than we did in part five. Mm -hmm. do you, do you I, think, I think it could have been very interesting. Yeah. Cause it, uh, you know, obviously does set up. Um, it does seem like it's going to set up for the next movie. Do you know if, um, if six originally was going to be, what it is where they bring Jason back from the dead, or was it going to be, um, his character, you know, becoming kind of the new Jason? Yeah, that's what it was going to be. But again, that was subject to change. I'm sure. sure their initial thing with the script was that it was going to pick up from there. And John was going to become the new Jason, the mm -hmm. new killer. Yeah. And I think that would have been interesting to see where they were going to go with that. Or were they going to bring a Jason back? You know, mm -hmm. um, but the initial that I got was that John was a new killer. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know if I was going to live. I, you know, it didn't get that far. Right. Cause I didn't know even, how far into six I would live even. Yeah. Cause that's even kind of set up in part four, the Tommy character, you kind of get the, yeah. the idea that he's going to go on to become uh, the killer. Right. Right. And, uh, I think it would have been very interesting. Mm-hmm. But who knows? I mean, part six, had it happened, uh, it could have been I turned in to be the killer. I would have gone for that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that I flip out and I start. <laughs> uh -huh. Nope. Grab the mask off of him and say, so, uh, you're on. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> the, uh, what was your reaction like at the time for the movie? When it came out, you mean? Yeah. Um, I was surprised some of the things that they cut out and some of the things they kept in. I was also surprised that my character was mostly uh, screaming, running, crying, you know, because there was a lot more stuff going on with that character. But I realized at that point that the film was all about the kills mm -hmm. and not about the characters, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was shooting it, I thought it was about the characters because remember I wasn't there for a lot of the kills. I was there. I could probably, I was probably there for, uh, just a couple of kills. Mm -hmm. And then of course my character, uh, comes in and finds the dead bodies and stuff. But I, I thought it would be more about a story because there was a story, you... but then I realized it was mostly about the kills the character that would be Jason um, and uh, screaming and yelling and crying and running for your life. Mm -hmm. People that, loved it. I mean, I know that's what the fans want. So mm -hmm. again, remember I had, I didn't know anything about Friday the 13th. I didn't know that's sure. what it was about. Yeah. Do you, do you know if, um, how it was edited was um, from the director or from the studio or, or that was their plan all along? It was edited. Well, they had to edit. They didn't want to edit the way they did, but they were getting an X rating. Mm -hmm. So they had to edit it, edit, edit. And it was between uh, Paramount and the ratings board and Danny Steinman. So they got in there and did it mm -hmm. because they were trying to save it from being an X. Mm -hmm. So it took a lot of editing from what I hear. Yeah. Do you know if that any of that saved, like where they could put out like a director's cut at some point? That's a good question. I have no idea if they save that. I mean, it would be smart to save it, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I know, like, today it would be like an, a no-brainer, but I don't oh, know if at the time, God. you know, if they save it. Yeah, at the also. time, I don't know. That's interesting. Danny's not with us anymore, but he yeah. would be the person to have asked that. Or maybe um, some of the editors that worked on it. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. now, but that's a good question. Um, before you, like, um, got online and you started to do the conventions... 
did you did you know that the movie had such a following? No, I had no idea. I mean, when it first came out, and I would go out, and people would see me, you know, on the street, any anywhere out in public, um, they would stop me, and it was a, a big frenzy. And I realized that there were fans for the film, obviously, but I didn't know to the extent and the fact that it was worldwide. I just thought it was, you know. America Mm -hmm. or major cities in America. I had no idea. It was really across the whole world because I have fans in places I never heard of. (laughs) Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. So that's been the biggest surprise and very, um, it makes you feel really good, you know, mm-hmm. that that many people saw it and liked it. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't feel great if they, you know, that many people saw it and hated it. <laughs> right, it's right. a mixed review, obviously, but mm-hmm. I'm surprised daily I hear from people. After all these years, daily I hear from people about how much they loved it and they would name certain parts they liked or what it meant to them or, you know, yeah. fascinating. I think, I think over the last... um maybe 10 years or so that, um, the movie I think is, um, the, the, the fans of Friday 13th franchise, uh, are more accepting to it. And I think it's actually become one of the, to some people, their favorite one or one of their favorites. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Because I think over the years or early on, people hated it. Mm-hmm. They were disappointed and, you know, and so I just didn't really pay too much attention to, you know, an actor, you go on with, a, you know, your next project sure. and the next thing. But I, I was aware that it wasn't really received that well. Um, I think you're right. It's probably been, you say 10 years, I, I, maybe so. Mm. Uh, I would even say five. It's <laughs> that people like are that, really, yeah. it's become a cult uh, phenomenon, mm-hmm. as all of them are. Mm-hmm. But part five, they, they kind of put it in its own little box, you know, mm-hmm. because yeah. it was different. Mm-hmm. And because it was different, you get the love hate, you know. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting idea, uh, the copycat killer, because that is something that happens in, in, in real life. And, in life, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they took a shot. I think it takes courage to do something, try something different. Mm -hmm. You don't know if it's going to work, but you take the shot and do it. So in that respect, I think I thought it was brave and I, and I'm not, um, I'm proud that I was in part five Mm -hmm. because it was the one that they kind of stepped out of the the box and tried something. Yeah. Um, you You know, the others are all good in their own right. Sure but they were still following the formula. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely the most um, unique of the, uh, of the movies. Yeah, and, I think so. But again, I didn't see them all. You probably did. <laughs> yes, I agree. I've seen part four. I've seen part four. That's it. I went to see part four when I got cast, so I would know what I was talking about, you know, yeah. what, I was, what, what I was in, what I was getting into. Mm-hmm. What did you think when you first saw so, part four? Um, I thought it was, I thought the cast was really great. I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not my thing cause I don't like gory horror films. I like suspenseful, like, you know, psych of the classics, the Hitchcock stuff. Mm-hmm. And I found these to be more, you know, gory and all about the, the violence and stuff. Mm-hmm. But that being said, I think part four was really well done. Mm-hmm. I think it had a story. That was interesting with the Corey Feldman character. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. You're about to say Psycho. Is that, is that one of your favorite horror movies? Yeah, I love Psycho. Um, Psycho, uh, even though The Exorcist isn't technically a horror film, The Exorcist to me is to this day one of the scariest things mm-hmm. I've ever seen. I agree. Because it's a true story, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a... And that cast, that cast was phenomenal. That director script, everything about that was perfection. Yes. They couldn't have made that better. No. And I know, you know, they remake everything, but I don't see um, no. what you no. could improve on about it. No, no, no. For the most part, I don't like remakes. 
but you know, or uh, sequels, which is funny because I was in a sequel, but <laughs> um, yeah, The Exorcist was perfection. Mm-hmm. Um, do you prefer the term final girl or scream queen? I like them both. Uh-huh. Final girl I like because that's, um, you know, a survivor. There's a strength to it. Screen queen I like because it makes me royalty (laughs) (laughs) and I'll never be a a princess or a queen. So I'll take it. So I like it. I like them both. Yeah. But they both have a different connotation. So Mm, that's very true. Um, And I'm flattered to be, you know, considered one. I'm flattered to be called a final girl. Yeah. I I would say I would be too, but that sounds weird, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, has has your view of the movie uh, changed at all over time? I've grown to like it more. Mm-hmm. Um, I can enjoy it. I, I, and, of course, it brings back memories now because I will look at it and remember what happened that day behind the scenes, mm-hmm. you know. Not just what I'm looking at the screen. Mm-hmm. I'll be looking at what's up there that was shot but I have a whole story about what went on that day. So it makes it more like um, a trip down memory lane or a kind of macabre family reunion or, um, you know, the Adams family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did, did you keep in contact with any of the cast before you started doing the conventions? Oh yeah. I, um, I saw Marco St. John. We would be in touch. Um, Shavar. Who else? Uh, those were the main two, and I and Ron Sloan and I stayed uh, in contact for a while. But you know, you lose contact because you move on to other jobs and you make mm-hmm. new friends on other films, and and you're traveling, so it's hard to keep it going. But we did for as long as we could. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark Marco moved to uh, back to um, Louisiana, so um, we kind of lost contact. But now we're we've we we uh, email and talk. And I see Shavar from time to time. We're, we've got a, kind of got a business together. Uh, oh. We've had so many people that wanted our memorabilia and pictures and stuff from the film mm-hmm. that he set up um, his own personal website to sell our stuff called ReggieTheReckless.com. And so you can get a lot of this stuff from part five there. Mm-hmm. And then he's been busy. We have a store on uh, Amazon and uh, eBay. So I get to see him just because we're doing the business together. Oh, that's very cool. And, and it's been fun. Yeah. He's such a great person. Yeah. 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 And, uh, he has a very memorable scream in the movie. The oh yeah. <laughs> the best one probably. Yeah. It prob- <laughs> uh, uh-huh. not to take any away f- from your screen. No, it's but he, bizarre, I think but... he had the best one. He uh-huh. really did. <laughs> <laughs> probably and, still got it. <laughs> I'll ask him. Uh, I'll ask him so to re- give us one sometime. Can you create the scream. Yeah. Uh, how yeah. Do you, how do you practice for a scream? Or do you practice for a scream you don't. before you don't? You no, you do don't. Uh-huh. You don't. You don't. It just becomes a visceral thing because you're involved in the moment of uh, of the story. You know, mm-hmm. you're you're about to be killed. Believe me, you're screaming. So yeah, and. It at just the, comes. It just comes. At the time when you made the movie, um, how did it affect your career being in a Friday the 13th a slasher movie? Well, it's kind of funny because you'd think it was a lead in a major, you know, it's a Paramount sure. picture. You'd think it would be a big leg up, a big step up, but it wasn't. It was, And for a while, I had to take it off my resume. Isn't that funny? Oh. Because at that time, they looked down on them. Mm-hmm. and And so it's kind of sad because had I done it now, it would have been a big deal. I, well, it was not a big deal. It was a big deal to the fans, moviegoers. It was not a big deal in the industry. Some people held it against me and I did take it off my resume. Wow. That's too bad. Yeah. And that shouldn't have been, but that's the way the business is. It's up and down, up and down. Um, so for my, now maybe others didn't have to do it. I have to say for my particular career, for the roles I was being brought in on, the type they thought I was, you know, uh, that was not cool. So, yeah. Mm. That's too bad. And um, yeah. 
uh, through the conventions, do you have any particular uh, fan interaction story where, I don't know if someone was particularly nice to you or gave you, like, uh, a cool gift or something? Something that you know, meant something to you? Well, you know, it really meant a lot. There were a group of guys that came from Connecticut to see me. I think I was in either New Jersey or I might have been in Maryland. It was one of my first ones. And they drove all the way in, and they arrived with three guys, and they arrived, young, really young guys, and they arrived with a giant bouquet of flowers. And I was very moved. It meant a lot to me. And they told me how much the film meant to them, that they had seen them all, and how much they loved Part 5, and uh, what they thought of my character. And it, it really surprised me, and it touched me. It was yeah. a very nice thing. For the most part, I have to say the fans have been unbelievably kind and, and, and nice to me. Mm-hmm. There are a couple of occasions where one will be nasty, rude, um, obsessive, mm-hmm. or will tell you how much they hate you. That's never fun. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know? that, that... And so I have to say, look, it was just a movie. It yeah. was just a character. Mm-hmm. But they will, they will hate you as a person. <laughs> <laughs> For having done the role, you know. Yeah. Like it was my fault they decided to not have Jason in it. No, it's a it's a real serious thing to them, and uh, mm-hmm. it's a true hate, true hatred. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know I laugh. So that but was it's a that's been thing. disconcerting. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's very few and far between. That's that's just like five percent. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the fans have been wonderful all over the the world. I've gone to Europe and I've gone to a lot of places, and I have to say, everyone has been unbelievably nice to me. Mm-hmm. I know there's a seems like a big horror fan base in Germany. We have a lot of listeners from there. Germany, yeah. huge, huge, and they're some of the most loyal, intense fans. Very nice, and also in England. England mm-hmm. has um, uh, London and Birmingham. They have some great c- conventions, and the fans go. They'll they're so loyal. They'll stand in line forever to come and meet you and spend five minutes with you. You know, yeah. they're just very warm and open. They bring their kids to meet you. Mm-hmm. They bring you food. <laughs> I had a baker bring me homemade cookies. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a big deal. I love my yeah. chocolate. So those chocolate chip cookies meant a lot to me. <laughs> yeah. That's very, that's very cool. <laughs> I never uh, forgot it. Loyal listener to our show, Vera from Germany sends me German chocolate <laughs> sometimes. And I'm very happy about that. <laughs> homemade chocolate chip. Yeah. Now, if someone wants to bring me a lobster, that's a whole other deal. <laughs> I will bring a lobster from from the Cape next time. <laughs> it'll oh, be it'll be hard to get it on the plane, but we'll figure it out. Well, hopefully, I'll come to Massachusetts. <laughs> I think I should do a show there that's, since yes. I'm a native. Yes, and yeah, you won't have show. to bring me. We can meet there. That would be a much um, better I think idea. there are there. I think there's one or two shows in Massachusetts, so hopefully, I'll do one there. Yeah, so there's a pretty big one in October, Rock and Shock. It's a very good show. Yeah. No, so maybe they should, uh, you know, I'm a I native agree. girl, so hopefully they'll bring a native final girl exactly. back there. I'll put, a good, I'll put a good word in for you. Ah, thanks. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. And uh, how can people follow you? Not like at your home, but how can they follow you online? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've been followed enough. Uh-huh. No, I'm on Twitter, uh, Final Girl 5 on Twitter. And Instagram, same. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, everyone's on Facebook, so they find me on Facebook. It's just Melanie Kinnaman. Yeah, All right, very cool. And it was a pleasure to talk to you. It was so great to talk to you. Thanks for uh, your interest, mm-hmm. and thanks for being a loyal, loyal fan of Part Five because we need them. You're very welcome. And I'll meet you for a lobster sometime. It sound that's a, that's a date. That's perfect. Exactly. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Hi, I'm Tiffany Helm from Friday the 13th Part 5. I was Violet, and you are listening to Without Your Head.